So John Jones this weekend uh, dominates uh, with a, again, I'm not the greatest UFC expert, but he kicks his, the dude myopic in the stomach, puts him down, immediately goes into his Trump dance, immediately uh, goes over to Donald Trump, points at him, and it just kind of symbolizes what's going on in the sports world and what's going on in America. Donald Trump is actually the unifying force that we've been looking for. Now that everybody can dust off, go away from their Trump derangement syndrome and start dealing with reality, and as Dana White says, move away from the BS, e even, <clears throat> and we'll probably get deeper into this tomorrow. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it today uh, because I, I want to deal with sports and we got things in football and we got, you know, obviously Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fault. We got things we got to cover today. But this morning on Morning Joe, Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski start off their show acknowledging that they went and met with Donald Trump uh, and had a sit down with him at Mar-a-Lago either on Thursday or Friday of last week. Everybody's, remember just for eight years, Morning Joe has been, Donald Trump is Hitler, he's a Nazi, he's an insurrectionist. Now, hey, let's fly down to Mar-a-Lago and see if we can make peace with Adolf Hitler. These people are phony, and they've been lying, and I've been saying forever that the sports world is critical to this entire PSYOP that they've been running. Nothing draws a bigger live audience or just a bigger audience than sports. Mike Tyson and Jake Paul in a little gimmick fight. 50, 60 million people went to Netflix. Everybody last uh, Saturday night was watching John Jones. Donald Trump shows up with the dream team of his cabinet and all of his supporters. And all of this, these lies, they've been told, oh, Donald Trump is hated and he's Hitler and, and no one can stand him. You got an entire arena there to see John Jones. And when Trump and his crew, Elon Musk, Vivek Ramaswamy, Tulsi Gabbard, RFK Jr., when they show up, the place erupts and greets them like conquering heroes because everybody's tired of the BS. And there's all kinds of direct ways to show that you're tired of the BS, and then there's fun, subtle ways, and that's what John Jones did, and it's bleeding over, look, it's bleeding over into the NFL. It's like men have been liberated, and we don't have to go on with this uh, cosplay that Donald Trump is an existential threat to democracy, or women, or, oh my God, or we're all going to go back to slavery, it's back to black people. We don't have to do that anymore. Donald Trump is actually uniting us. T tell me, and again, my... Uh, memory is can be fuzzy, and and I wasn't as immersed in the political world then as I am now. Let's be honest. The insurance model is broken. Crowd Health puts your health care back in your hands. Use the promo code FEARLESS at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com, promo code FEARLESS. But, but this kind of widespread joy that's cutting across economic lines, cutting across racial lines, cutting across ethnic lines, did we have that when uh, Barack Obama was elected president? And, and you can say, yeah, hey, uh, black people and leftists, they were overjoyed. And, and <clears throat> it's the exact same fit. I don't think it is. I, I really don't. And, and I'm going, I did not vote for Barack Obama. When Barack Obama sold out his minister, Jeremiah Wright, I, I, I dusted Barack Obama. Not that I was 
ever all that into him. But when he dusted his minister, you sit in the church for 20 some odd years, and then all of a sudden, in order to be president, you'll denounce your minister. That, that was a lack of loyalty that was too far for me. And I was like, OK, this guy's just a politician. Miss me with all that. I'm good not voting. Second time he ran, I knew exactly who he was, and I certainly wasn't voting for him. But I just don't remember this optimism and joy. And, and look, my memory uh, is, is probably wrong. And maybe, may, maybe there was this unifying feeling. Maybe there was this joy and I'm just misremembering, or I have such a bias against the left that I can't even fully recognize. But what's going on right now in this country? I don't remember athletes feeling so compelled to come out of the closet and say, hey, look, I'm a Trump supporter. Let me do something to show that I have Trump's back. Let's play, the, this is, I think, just from this weekend, uh, a compilation of athletes uh, doing the Trump dance across uh, athletic fields and arenas. It's, <laughs> everybody, man, black, white, everybody. Trump is fun. Trump is joy. Trump is the unifying force. This is, <clears throat> I, 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 I can't remember this feeling of every day, just and like excited, like what good news am I going to find out next? And and you know, it, it's it's an unbelievable feeling, and and there will be people trying to rain on it. I want to show you guys uh, this tweet from Bakari Sellers. He's some kind of CNN contributor, MSNBC type contributor. He ran for political office once. He's a sire, but he put out this tweet, blacks for Trump, don't worry. We just want y'all to know you're not qualified. And he, this picture of Trump's cabinet. And, and, and I wanna break some news to Bakari Sellers and everybody else that loves to play identity politics, loves to play diversity, equity, and inclusion politics. There are some of us, black people, there, and it ain't, I know it's not many, but there are some of us that prioritize values over skin color. There are some of us more concerned with policies over skin color. I don't care if uh, Donald Trump names a single black person to his cabinet. I care about whether the policies that they enact make it easier for Christians and patriotic Americans to live, work, and prosper in this country. All of this symbolism that you all think will fix things, I completely disagree with. A symbolic Indian woman pretending to be black president would not fix anything. So what I'm excited about is Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy gutting the government. The government is killing average, everyday Americans. The government, this all-intrusive, all-inclusive government is destroying families across America, and it's gone on for 60 or 70 straight years, maybe longer. Maybe we go back to FDR and, and all of his policies. It, it, the government is in the way of God. And so I don't care. I don't need a color-coded cabinet. I need people that I trust and Donald Trump trusts to do the job of draining the swamp. I know that's an unbelievable uh, thought and, and uh, belief for someone like Bakari Soller, Sellers who think, and many black people who think, oh God, yeah, Barack Obama's gonna be president and things are going to improve for us. No, things improve for gay people. That's what happened. That's the reality.
Nothing improved for us with a color-coded presidency. And so fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And just because Bakari Sellers wants to be a fool doesn't mean the rest of us have to be. And so the rest of us are going to lean into this joy, recognize the fact that the hypocrites, the liars, the propagandists that have said in the media and say, oh, this guy's Adolf Hitler. Oh, he's a fascist. Oh, he's going to put black people back in chains. You're going to be picking cotton. They're liars. They want us enslaved to the government because they're enslaved to the government. They're in bed with the FBI and the CIA. We're not. I'm not. Rational people are not. This is, I mean, to what we're seeing, what we're experiencing, I want to play uh, sot number one of John Jones acknowledging God. This is what we need more of in sports. You know what? While I got the moment, while everybody's cheering and so happy, I want to acknowledge Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, t- I tell you what, man. I-, I cannot take credit for a gift like this, man. I really owe it all to him. And I know that there's millions of people around the world watching right now. And I just want to let you guys know that Jesus loves you so much. That- that's all I'll say about that. So walk me through it. The the left has uh, their African-American savior, Colin Kaepernick. Has he ever said anything like that at any time when he had the spotlight and had the stage in the NFL? Ever said it? When he was taking a knee and had everybody's attention, did he ever talk about Jesus Christ? Ever. Ever. Did it ever happen? Oh, I know he's got the big afro. I know he occasionally wore cornrows. I know he misquoted Malcolm X. But did he ever honor our Lord and Savior? Because it's not his. He's a Marxist. The entire leftist movement is Marxist. These people hate God. And so I'm overjoyed. And as you can hear, people in that audience at that UFC fight, when this man shouted out Jesus Christ, everybody started cheering, or a lot of people did. I'm overjoyed. Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.